What is the most intelligent but yet funniest joke you've ever heard? This is one of my favorites. When Albert Einstein was making the rounds of the speaker's circuit, he usually found himself eagerly longing to get back to his laboratory work. One night as they were driving to yet another rubber chicken dinner, Einstein mentioned to his chauffeur, a man who somewhat resembled Einstein in looks and manner, that he was tired of speech making. I have an idea, boss, his chauffeur said. I've heard you give this speech so many times. I'll bet I could give it for you. Einstein laughed loudly and said, why not? Let's do it. When they arrived at the dinner, Einstein donned the chauffeur's cap and jacket and sat in the back of the room. The chauffeur gave a beautiful rendition of Einstein's speech and even answered a few questions expertly. Then a supremely pompous professor asked an extremely esoteric question about antimatter formation, digressing here and there to let everyone in the audience know that he was nobody's fool. Without missing a beat, the chauffeur fixed the professor with a steely stare and said, Sir, the answer to that question is so simple that I will let my chauffeur, who is sitting in the back, answer it for me. Einstein also had an office once of which the window pointed into the garden of a sanitarium. He had the custom to show visitors the patients through his window and say here you see the portion of insane people who do not do quantum mechanics. At least I read that in some book. I can't find the quote right now unfortunately. A physicist, a chemist, and a statistician walk into an office to discover the trash can is on fire. The physicist announces we must put the garbage can in the fridge so that the temperature will be below the ignition temperature and therefore put itself out. The chemist replies no, we must cover the garbage can so that the fire consumes all of the oxygen and, in the absence of reactants, can no longer continue. Meanwhile, the two turn around to find that the statistician is running around the room setting everything else on fire. What the heck are you doing? Getting a proper sample size. When theologians asked J. B. S. Haldane what could be inferred about the mind of the creator from the works of his creation, he answered, an inordinate fondness for Beatles, this one has always made me laugh. Know why Polish airlines only fill half of an airplane for each flight? Poles on the right half of the plane are unstable. Now this is a narrow fielded joke, control FTW. A logician's wife is having a baby. The doctor immediately hands the newborn to the dad. His wife asks impatiently, So, is it a boy or a girl? The logician replies, Yes. A programmer went to the grocery store. His wife said while you are out, go get some milk. He never came back. A Roman senator comes into the senate 15 minutes late one day. Cicero is up front making a speech, so he creeps into his seat as quietly as possible and whispers to the guy next to him. What's he talking about the guy replies, I don't know, he hasn't gotten to the verb. Having taken a single year of Latin, I can appreciate this lol. Most intelligent doesn't necessarily mean intelligent, so here are the economics jokes this economist find funny, talk is cheap, supply exceeds demand, or, Three econometricians went out hunting, and came across a large deer. The first econometrician fired, but missed, by a meter to the left. The second econometrician fired, but also missed, by a meter to the right. The third econometrician didn't fire, but shouted in triumph, we got it, we got it. Go to love that world renowned economist's sense of humor. Oscar Wilde is at a public meeting where the audience are quizzing him on certain topics. Mr. Wilde is answering questions to and fro when one audience member asks if he can ask about any topic he wants. Wilde replies that he can indeed, as being the master of conversation which he is, he may talk about any subject known to man. Suggestions once again are being tossed at Wilde, when the same man demands that he speak for as long as he can about the queen. Wilde takes a deep breath, pauses a moment, shrugs and replies. I'm terrible sorry my good fellow, but the queen as you know is not a subject. I find this particularly funny because Stephen Fry played Oscar Wilde in a particularly good biopic. Now I'm just imagining Wilde as a guest on QI. What do you get when you cross an octopus with a cow? A reprimand from the Scientific Integrity and Professional Ethics Committee and immediate withdrawal of your grant funding. Make one octopus and everyone loses their mind. Jean-Paul Sartre is sitting at a French cafe, revising his draft of being and nothingness. He says to the waitress, I'd like a cup of coffee, please, with no cream. 
The waitress replies, I'm sorry, monsieur, but we're out of cream. How about with no milk? My brother's fiancée told me this one from when she was working in a hospital. What kind of work do you do? Oh, I work with kidneys. So do you work in nephrology or pediatric orthopedics? This is an anti-joke limerick by Tom Stoppard. It describes itself as it is happening. A performative poet of Hibernia rhymed himself into a hernia. He became quite adept at this practice except for the occasional non sequitur. A dying mosquito exclaimed, a chemist has poisoned my brain. The cause of his sorrow was peridochloro, diphenyltrochlorothane, DDT. An infinite number of mathematicians walk into a bar. The first orders a beer, the second orders half a beer, the third orders a quarter of a beer and so on. After the seventh order the bartender pours two beers and says, you fella sought to know your limits. Thanks for not screwing up the punchline like every other person who tells this joke. A Roman walks into a bar and asks for a martinus. You mean a martini the bartender asks. The Roman replies, if I wanted a double, I would have asked for it. Also similar, a Roman walks into a bar and holds up two fingers for drinks. The bartender proceeds to give him five drinks. I think I heard this one on Reddit too. Werner Heisenberg, Kurt Gödel, and Noam Chomsky walk into a bar. Heisenberg turns to the other two and says, clearly this is a joke, but how can we figure out if it's funny or not? Gödel replies, we can't know that because we're inside the joke. Chomsky says, of course it's funny, you're just telling it wrong. A mathematician, a biologist and a physicist are sitting in a street cafe, watching people going in and coming out of the house on the other side of the street. First they see two people going into the house. Time passes. After a while, they notice three persons coming out of the house. The physicist, the measurement wasn't accurate. The biologist's conclusion, they have reproduced. The mathematician, if now exactly one person enters the house then it will be empty again. The other day my friend was telling me that I didn't understand what irony meant, which is ironic, because we were standing at a bus stop. I had a sudden fear that I didn't understand what irony means, because I was looking for an obvious punchline. Then I calmed down and got sad about the amount of people I know that wouldn't understand that it's supposed to be a joke. Heisenberg and Skrodina are speeding down the highway when a state cop pulls them over. The cop walks up to the window and asks Heisenberg, Do you know how fast you are going? Heisenberg replies, No, but I knew where I was. Thinking this answer is a little strange, the cop decides to investigate the vehicle. He begins by opening the trunk. Shocked by what he finds, he shouts, You have a dead cat in here. Skrodina answers, Well I do now. The cop says, you were going over 90 miles per hour. To which Heisenberg replies, fine, now we're lost. A photon checks into a hotel. The bellhop asks, can I help you with your luggage? It replies, I don't have any, I'm traveling light. A woman walks into a bar. She says to the bartender give me an enter. Better make it a double. So the bartender gives it to her. Took me a little while but I got it in the end. Good one. There were three kingdoms, each bordering on the same lake. For centuries, these kingdoms had fought over an island in the middle of that lake. One day, they decided to have it out, once and for all. The first kingdom was quite rich, and sent an army of 25 knights, each with three squies. The night before the battle, the knights jousted and cavorted as their squies polished armor, cooked food, and sharpened weapons. The second kingdom was not so wealthy, and sent only 10 knights, each with two squies. The night before the battle, the knights cavorted and sharpened their weapons as the squies polished armor and prepared dinner. The third kingdom was very poor, and only sent one elderly KNGHT with his sole squie. The night before the battle, the knight sharpened his weapon, while the squie, using a looped rope, slung a pot high over the fire to cook while he prepared the knight's armor. The next day, the battle began. All the knights of the first two kingdoms had cavorted a bit too much. One should never cavort while sharpening weapons and jousting, and could not fight. The squire of the third kingdom could not rouse the elderly knight in time for combat. So, in the absence of the knights, the squies fought. The battle raged well into the late hours, 
But when the dusk finally settled, a solitary figure limped from the carnage. The lone squy from the third kingdom dragged himself away, beaten, bloodied, but victorious. And it just goes to prove, the squy of the high potent noose is equal to the sum of the squies of the other two sides. God dang it. I don't know what defines an intelligent joke but here's a joke for programmers, if that counts. It why don't jokes work in octal? Because 7, 10, 11. If that counts, haha, ha, ha, I get it. Franz Kafka's parents come into his room one morning to wake him for work, only to discover their son has undergone metamorphosis into a disgusting insect. Upon seeing his son's sorry state, Mr. Kafka runs to his son's desk, grabs a tank of sea invertebrates, and dumps it out the window. Mrs. Kafka, appalled, asks him why he would do that. Mr. Kafka replies, with friends like this, who needs an eminence? Three pregnant women are knitting sweaters for their babies at the gynecologist's waiting room. The first one takes a pill out of her purse and says, I want my baby to have a strong nervous system, so I'm taking a followed pill. The second one takes a pill out of her purse and says, I want my baby to have healthy blood, so I'm taking an iron pill. The third one takes a pill out of her purse and says, this is thalidomide. The other two women look in horror. Why? The third one calmly replies, I just fricked up the sleeves on this sweater. A nice dark twist to this thread. If you lose one of your senses, the body compensates by enhancing your perception of other senses. That's why people with no sense of humor feel such a strong sense of self-importance. You might be more right than I am comfortable with. Three logicians walk into a bar. The bartender asks do all of you want a drink? The first logician says I don't know. The second logician says I don't know. The third logician says yes. Three professionals, a mathematician, a physicist and an engineer, took their final test for the job. The sole question in the exam was how much is 1 plus 1. The math dude asked the receptionist for a ream of paper. Two hours later, he said, I have proven it's a natural number. The physicist, after checking parallax error and quantum tables said, it's between 1.9999999999. And 2.0000000001. The engineer quickly said, Oh, it's easy, it's two. No, better make it three, just to be safe. Heisenberg, Scrodinger, and Omar are in a car and get pulled over. Heisenberg is driving, and the cop asks, Do you know how fast you are going? Heisenberg goes, No, but I know exactly where I am. The cop replies, You were doing 50 in a 35. Heisenberg throws up his hands and shouts, great, now I'm lost. The cop thinks this is suspicious and orders him to pop the trunk. He checks it out, and goes, did you know you have a dead cat back here? Scrodinger shouts back, we do now, butthole. The cop moves to arrest them, Ohm resists. Holmes and Watson are on a camping trip. In the middle of the night Holmes wakes up and gives Dr. Watson a nudge. Watson he says, look up in the sky and tell me what you see. I see millions of stars. Holmes, says Watson. And what do you conclude from that? Watson. Watson thinks for a moment. Well, he says, astronomically, it tells me that there are millions of galaxies and potentially billions of planets. Astrologically, I observe that Saturn is in Leo. Horologically, I deduce that the time is approximately a quarter past three. Meteorologically, I suspect that we will have a beautiful day tomorrow. Theologically, I see that God is all powerful, and we are small and insignificant. Uh, what does it tell you? Holmes? Watson? You idiot. Someone has stolen our tent. I heard the same joke in Russian, and I should say its beauty is in how it doesn't lose anything when translated. Most jokes die in the process. What do you get when you cross a mosquito and a mountain climber? Nothing. You can't cross a vector and a scalar. This is the single most nerdy joke I have ever heard. Nothing else comes even close. Not a joke but a true story that I have always thought was funny and clever. I read Dolly Parton's autobiography and she stated that she was in a health class with her older brother, who was known for being very honest. One day they had to go around and tell what they had for breakfast. Dolly said she was so embarrassed at how poor they were that when it was her turn she lied and listed off every breakfast item she could name. 
she realized with horror that her brother was sitting behind her and was going to expose her to the whole class as a liar. As she sat there nervously the teacher called on her brother and asked what he had for breakfast. He paused and then calmly said, I ate the same thing she did. Ha, huh, that took me a second to get, because I skimmed over the part where her brother was described as very honest. Punchline ruiner, he told the truth while not exposing her as a liar. A banker, a politician and a teacher are having lunch. The waiter brings over three after dinner cookies. The banker immediately eats two of the cookies, leaving the politician and the teacher eyeing each other over the last one. The banker leans over to the politician and says watch out, that sucker wants your cookie. The waiter then gets fired for serving after dinner cookies at a lunch. Two men are at a restaurant on their lunch break. They're having an argument over whether or not the average person is comfortable doing basic mathematics. The first man says, I doubt most people can even do long division. But then the second guy says, no way, I'll bet the average Joe is much better at math than you think. The first guy goes off to the bathroom, while he's gone, in an effort to win the argument. The second guy calls the waitress over, he says, when my friend gets back, I'm going to call you over and ask you a math question. All you have to do is respond, x cubed over 3, got that she says, x3 cubed, what did you say x cubed over 3, ok, got it, x cubed over 3, as the waitress walks away, she keeps repeating to herself, x cubed over 3, x cubed over 3, the first guy finally comes back from the bathroom and the second guy says to him, here, let's do an experiment. I'll ask the waitress a calculus question and see what she does. The first guy laughs but says, go ahead. The second guy smiles and calls the waitress over. He says, let me ask you a quick math question. What's the integral of x squared? The waitress faithfully responds, x cubed over 3. The first guy starts saying, no way while the second guy starts telling him, I told you so but as the waitress is walking away. She looks over her shoulder and interrupts them to say, wait wait wait, plus a constant. If I may add something of the classic, yo mama style, your mother is so fat, you can see what's behind her due to gravitational lensing. Slightly tweaked version from another similar thread, a philosopher says to an English major what if, instead of periods, women had apostrophes and the English major replied they'd be more possessive and have more frequent contractions. The antithesis of blonde jokes. A blonde woman walks into a bank in NYC before going on vacation and asks for a $5,000 loan. The banker asks, Okay, miss, is there anything you would like to use as collateral? The woman says yes, of course. I'll use my Rolls Royce. The banker, stunned, asks a $250,000 Rolls Royce. Really the woman is completely positive. She hands over the keys, as the bankers and loan officers laugh at her. They check her credentials, make sure she is the title owner. Everything checks out. They park it in their underground garage for two weeks. When she comes back, she pays off the $5,000 loan as well as the $15.41 interest. The loan officer says miss, we are very appreciative of your business with us. But I have one question. We looked you up and found out that you are a multi-millionaire. Why would you want to borrow $5,000? The woman replies where else in New York City can I park my car for 2 weeks for only $15.41 and expect it to be there when I return. Einstein dies and goes to heaven. There's a decent sized line to get in, so he starts talking to this group of 3 New Zealanders in line in front of him. He asks them what their IQ scores are. The first man says 140 and Einstein replies, great. For the rest of eternity we can talk about New Zealand's stance on global politics and nuclear proliferation. The second man proudly states, 180. Einstein says, that's wonderful. For the rest of eternity we can talk about atomic physics and my theory of relativity. The third man mumbles, 50. Einstein pauses, and then asks, so, what is your projection for the budget deficit this year? Today, I saw a midget prisoner climbing down a wall. As he turned and sneered at me, I thought, that's a little condescending. Programmers keep two glasses on his night table. One with water, one without. One is for if they are thirsty when they wake up, the other if they aren't. I have a TCP joke. Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? 
Did you get it? But you might not get it. UDP. I have a joke about. Rene Descartes enters a bar. The bartender asks do you think you'd like a beer Descartes responds. I think not. And he disappears. A programmer's wife tells him. Go to the market and grab some apples. If they have eggs. Grab a dozen. He returns with 13 apples. A programmer's wife tells him. Go to the market to get bread. While you're there. Get eggs. He never comes home. A mathematician is taught. By his wife. To boil water. First. He's told, take the pot out of the cupboard, then fill it with water, put it on the stove, and finally turn the stove on, and wait about 10 minutes. The mathematician nods, in understanding. Can you do this? The mathematician proceeds to follow the instructions, and successfully boils water. The following day, he enters the kitchen again, where his wife has already begun cooking. He sees a cold pot of water on the stove, which is yet to be turned on. His wife asks my hands are full, could you boil that water? The mathematician dumps the water out, puts the pot back in the cupboard, and declares this is equivalent to her previously solved problem. A mathematician and an engineer agreed to take part in an experiment. They were both placed in a room and at the other end was a beautiful naked woman on a bed. The experimenter said every 30 seconds they would be allowed to travel half the distance between themselves and the woman. The mathematician said this is pointless and stormed off. The engineer agreed to go ahead with the experiment anyway. The mathematician exclaimed on his way out don't you see. You'll never actually reach her. To which the engineer replied. So what? Pretty soon I'll be close enough for all practical purposes. The maid asked for a raise. And the wife was upset. She asked. Now, Helen, why do you think you deserve a pay increase? Helen, there are three reasons. The first is that I am better than you. Wife, who said that? Helen, your husband. Wife, oh, Helen, the second reason is that I am a better cook than you. Wife, who said that? Helen, your husband. Wife, oh, Helen, the third reason is that I am better at sex than you. Wife. Did my husband say that as well? Helen. No. The gardener did. Wife. So. How much do you want? Not that intelligent. But it is a great joke. Newton. Pascal and Einstein are all playing a game of hide and seek. Einstein is counting. So Pascal runs off and hides behind a tree. Newton. Meanwhile. Picks up a piece of chalk. And draws a perfect 1 meter by 1 meter square around himself. Einstein finishes counting and upon looking up exclaims, I found you Pascal. Note, some tell this joke but add Newton saying no you found one Newton over one meter squared. You found Pascal. This completely ruins the delivery in my opinion. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.